weekend right here at Mazda Raceway with the pre-reunion event. Guys get to come out and actually race last week. Then it kicks up again on Tuesday. They do a great little Concord Elegance right on Ocean Ave in Carmel. And you have, of course, Gordon McCall's famed Motor Works revival that takes place over the Jet Center. And it just goes on day by day. There's all kinds of auctions taking place all over the place. You have the Italian Stampede and the Porsche Works reunion, Legends of the Yadabon, the Quail yesterday, Concours de Lemons earlier today, which is an absolute riot. You have to see that if you ever get a chance to come here. You have all the events here at the racetrack, and then it all kind of wraps up tomorrow with the racing here and the Pebble Beach Concours. That's right, the gold standard of worldwide Concours d'Elegance. Looking forward to it. Glad to have you with us now as we prepare for race 3A for 1955 to 61 sports racing machinery over two liters displacement. Names like Lister, Maserati, Healy, Scarab, Ferrari, Cooper, Chaparral, you name it. The engine tone is going to change dramatically with this group, too. It's going to get deeper. There's much more of a rumble out of some of these vehicles, and uh, the ground's going to shake a little bit more. As they make their warm-up lap, just look at that, drivers. The, the gentleman behind the wheel of number six is uh, one that might be recognized by quite a few people, Robert Kaufman, who owns uh, RK Motors back in uh, the Charlotte, North Carolina area, has been involved in NASCAR ownership with Michael Waltrip Racing, uh, has competed at Le Mans behind the wheel of one of his Ferraris, I believe he drove there one year. He's been around quite a bit. Up the Ray Hall straight they go. No time to look around at the scenery, though. Up ahead, the turn in point for the corkscrew turn. Some fascinating machinery out here. Yeah, and some diverse styling, too, right? Mm -hmm. You've got these full fendered machines here, but the way the bodywork is shaped, they're all so different. And then there's the... Well, you can't miss it, styling of the Testarossa right there. I was looking at that car down in the paddock earlier. Uh, of course, a 1958 Ferrari 250 Testarossa. It's owned by Tony Wang at a Lloyd Harbor, New York. Raced at Le Mans in 1958. Ran here at Laguna Seca in 1960. Back here once again. One of those iconic shapes that you can pick out from a mile away. There's a handful like that, right? A Cobra, 250 GTO, Testarossa. They just, yeah. no matter where you are. All right, here comes the green. And we get down to business. at those racing lines. That silver car, very tight on the turn in. Looks like waiting to turn three. Early lead to that blue and white number 84, Greg Meyer, Los Altos, California, driving a 59 Sadler Mark IV. Car running in second place is Dyke Ridgely, driving a 1960 Chaparral. So Jim Hall's second car. Ran at Sebring, Road America, and the Canadian Grand Prix even competed in Nassau right there, number 66. Very early example of some of the most progressive racing car designs in the country back in the day. If you were to come up with a list of the top 10 most innovative engineers in motorsports jim hall is on that list i'm not sure where but he's on the list of the top 10 there's no doubt about it yeah. the great minds one of the great innovators the sucker car yeah the wings and the yep. fans the and all wings. the different things he tried articulated wings spectacular aerodynamics usually built around chevrolet small block engines you know some of the things that he did back then people are doing again now and calling it innovative. As 
wonderful museum in Midland, Texas, dedicated to Jim Hall. Right now, Fred Meyer and Dyke Ridgely making it difficult on everyone else. A race car that's leading this event, built in 1959. Bill Sadler ran it in Canada through 1960. Eventually it was sold to David Greenblatt, who competed with the car for a couple of years. Sadler then restored the car after he got it back years later. Drove it all the way until the age of 84 when he last drove it here, 2015, the Rolex Monterey Motorsports Reunion. The hell they go. Looking back, car number 11 is Gary Cox in his 53 Healy Chevy Special out of Newport Beach, California. Just tiny car. Saw snaking down the left side. There's a little piece of racetrack right now. Here comes the hairpin. And here comes number 91. It's Fred Burke in his 62 Cooper Monaco with Ferrari power. You talked about Pete Lovely uh, who won the first ever race here in 1957. Mm -hmm. Pete actually owned this car for a while. There goes Robert Kaufman in that number one right there the red car. It's a Lister. Chasing Sandra McNeil there. Right. We have a handful of female drivers out here enjoying Mazda Raceway the Gunasaka. Cooper Monaco T49. That's Joseph DiLoretto, the Dolphin Sports Racer, 1961 car right there. Number 33, Blue Machine. Built in 61 in San Diego, California. It's got a small block in it. Company built formula cars and small bore race cars. Eventually ran out of money. Ken Miles used to do a lot of the testing for them. Here comes that lead duo down into Rainey. Once again, Ooh, oh, man. big lurch yeah. in the 66. Uh, Chaparral getting a little loose. Could use one of Jim's big wings on the back. A little extra bite out of the rear needed. The idea is not not down drag out racing, but to go out there in the company of like-minded individuals and do some really hot lapping in some fabulous race cars. Everybody on hand today at Mazda Raceway with the Seca is getting an eyeful and an earful. League group of two may soon be three. Yeah, they cooked it in there pretty good. You see the brakes, tires moving. It's a bit, bit of a different mindset to go vintage racing too, isn't it, Bob? You have to remind yourself. I'm sure many of these competitors have competed in and probably still compete in a wide variety of different forms of racing, and you got to remember what it is you're doing here. Sometimes you got to. Keep the red mist at a minimum, and we have a change for the lead, and the Chaparral goes to the front here. Scarab closing in from third. We got a pretty good battle in our hands here, Justin. The track, it's it's incredible to the, the tone has gone up, and the speed limit now is about 96 miles an hour, guy. Still not quite an IMSA pace, which is a nice segue, because I've just bumped into Scott Atherton, who's president of IMSA. Scott, it's a busman's holiday in a way. We're here in a few weeks. 
Can't wait to come back, but really enjoying it here today for sure. Uh, we had the, the good fortune to be directly a part of this track years ago, and once you get uh, Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca into your system, you can't shake it, and it's a good habit to have. And of course, we had a wonderful reveal over there a bit earlier with the new Acura. That got my juices going, and I'm sure could be why you're here too. Yeah, it's uh, as I said earlier, it's, it's fulfillment of a long-term goal to bring Acura back in in the top category in the prototype class with a beautiful new DPI, and uh, to unveil it at the Quail and then have it on display here at Mazda Raceway. Yeah, it's a perfect weekend for us. It just adds to the momentum, and uh, it'll be another uh, a year before that car is here racing, but we'll be back here next month bringing the WeatherTech Championship back to Mazda Raceway. Perfect, and I tell you what, everybody as I've been coming around, a lot of the fans are very excited to see the big sports cars back here in a few weeks. Thank you very much, Scott. Before making his way to IMSA, Scott used to be the man in charge here at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. I was talking with him yesterday at the unveiling the first unveiling of that car over at the Quail yesterday, the new Acura prototype. He said it takes about three years, Bob, from the original first phone call of the manufacturer to the sanctioning body saying, hey, we're kind of interested, before they're able to unveil it like they did yesterday. So it'll be a big treat for them to see it get on the racetrack for the first time at the Rolex 24 Hours of Daytona next January, end of January. January. Yep. Great, great race. So the order is Ridgely, Meyer, and then David Swig. There he is in that blue scarab from 1958. Fabulous story behind the scarabs. Lance Reventlo, heir to the Woolworth, Woolworth Dime Store fortune, decided he wanted to be a race car constructor. So he built a precious few scarab sports cars and Formula One cars. And they are highly prized by collectors. See Rick Noop just working the wheel his 1959 machine there. Achievement special. Rick Noob also has a McLaren Can-Am car. Earlier I mentioned the old Pebble Beach Road Race documentary, Racing Through the Forest. Well, it basically centers around Rick Noob's, Rick Noob's dad, who went by the nickname Frosty, who raced there. It was a key part of that scene from 50 to 56. Well, here's one for you about the Achievement. Let's see if you knew this. It's, it was actually named after a reclusive Australian spiny anteater, immortalized in Greek mythology as the mother of all monsters. <laughs> well, you know what a scarab is. We talked about Lance Reventlow's cars. That was a beetle revered in ancient Egypt. There's only three of those built, and we're getting to watch one here today here at the Rolex Monterey Motorsports Reunion. That's it right there, number 65. Well, he's really got to work that wheel, too. He's sawing away at it, isn't he? Yes, he is. With a quick look down at his mirrors, because he knows he's got traffic coming up fast from behind. Back up to the front of the field, and it's still the Chaparral out front. Out of Decatur, Illinois. Line through turn 10, brake lights flash. Pumping the pedal just a little bit to get ready for 11. There goes our Testa Rosa bike. One piece of non-vintage equipment most of these competitors will have on their cars is some sort of a camera to capture all their onboard footage. Just You'll see them mounted just about everywhere. Testarossa is going to go down a lap. These guys will take it back to their haulers and they'll watch it and study it, download it to their different devices and try to study their lines and just go back and replay the fun that they've had too. Right. Go have a beer with their rivals and have a good laugh. Because once again, it's not about hard racing. It's about the enjoyment, the celebration of these cars, if you will. Boy, I've looked hard at that chaparral, and I just don't see many styling cues that were omens for what Jim Hall was going to do with those cars in the future. Notice the rake on the windshield there. 
Jonathan Fibers, Maserati. Oh, smoke Ooh, from behind. Boy. And Somebody we have got a car off in four. Yeah, he did. I think that's Al Arciero in the Lister. The only silver car that I know of in the field. Of course, the famed Arciero Racing family. They've got a handful of cars here this weekend. A puff of smoke coming out of that blue machine there. The Dolphin, they're running fourth and fifth. Yep, there goes RCR up the hill. Next up after this group, boy, we're really going to step the speed up, Bob. we got the 1973 to 1981 FIA IMSA GT GTX and AAGT machinery. It is a huge field of cars, and it is a very, very fast and competitive bunch of Porsches and BMWs and Deccans and Datsuns and Corvettes. It's going to be a lot of fun for sure. That's coming. The race leader, Zach Ridgely in the Chaparral. Yep. Going by Mike Fisher's 1959 Bocar XPS. Another one of a kind special with a unique racing history. Zach Ridgely. Really getting with the program now. You saw him using all of the track and the curbing through turn six and up the hill. Once had the honor of riding behind Mario Andretti in the two seater IndyCar that features in all of the uh, Horizon IndyCar Series races around the country. Mm -hmm. And that was a religious experience. He did that here. Did that here, yeah. The Mazda Race with Laguna Seca. Mario never shy about mashing the gas. <laughs> That's for sure. Going to get another lap in. Let's see. The flagger will be just to your left. Yep, we're going again. Yep. They're under braking. Double apex corner there in Andretti. He went in a little deeper than he intended to, but he pulled it back in, hit the apex on the way out. That's turn three there. You go under the bridge, over to four. It's like the battle between fourth and fifth is kind of uh, separated here a little bit. Joseph DiLoretto. The blue number 33, Dolphin Sport. He's had a little bit of smoke coming out of the back of that car, Bob, but I don't know. Well, we never know with these cars. Yeah, whether that might be just a little right. overfill of the oil tank. or Sometimes these machines will burn a little oil to add a little energy to the fuel system. Oh, no. <laughs> that doesn't look like yeah, that, something the coach drew up on yeah. the board. No, that's, yeah. that's a problem. But he's only got one lap to go. Behind is Jonathan Ferber in his 1960 Maserati Tipo 51. While up at the front. Leader just working his way through. We should be seeing the checker this time as they come out of the final corner. Out of 11. Line it up. Head for the bridge. There it is. Checkered flag. Ridgely takes the victory. Chaparral getting another victory here in Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. Well done. Now this is number 33. We're going to see if Joseph DiLoretto can get that Dolphin to the finish line. Hopefully with no damage. Lots of track time for these incredible cars and their passionate owners best use of it. He made the flag. Behind that man. 
you know, the Chaparral getting the win here today. But in 1966, Phil Hill gave Chaparral its only victory in the Can-Am Series here. Well, the much lamented Can-Am, not, uh, not a series that lasted very long. Dominated early on by Bruce McLaren, Denny Holm, and then came the Porsches, the 917-10s, 917-30s. There are some great videos out there of Can-Am action here with full fields of cars doing what they did best. Unlimited displacement, run what you brung, spectacular innovation. Well, coming up next is going to be Group 4A, 73-81 FIA, IMSA, GT, GTX, and AAGT machinery. And while we wait for them to grid up and make their way out onto the racetrack, let's get another Michelin experience from the weekend, this time with Mike Joy.